Chapter 5 It was strange to be in the marketplace without father. Parvana almost expected to see him in their usual place, sitting on the blanket, reading and writing his customers' letters. Women were not allowed to go into the shops. Men were supposed to do all the shopping. But if women did it, they had to stand outside and call in for what they needed. Parvana had seen shopkeepers beaten for serving women inside their shops. Parvana wasn't sure if she would be considered a woman. On the one hand, if she behaved like one and stood outside the shop and called in her order, she could get in trouble for not wearing a burqa. On the other hand, if she went into a shop, she could get in trouble for not acting like a woman. She put off her decision by buying the naan first. The baker's stall opened onto the street. Parvana pulled her chudder more tightly around her face so that only her eyes were showing. She held up ten fingers, ten loaves of naan. A pile of naan was already baked, but she had to wait a little while for four more loaves to be flipped out of the oven. The attendant wrapped the bread in a piece of newspaper and handed it to Parvana. She paid without looking up. The bread was still warm. It smelled so good. The wonderful smell reminded Parvana how hungry she was. She could have swallowed a whole loaf in one gulp. The fruit and vegetable stand was next. Before she had time to make a selection, a voice behind her shouted, What are you doing on the street dressed like that? Parvana whirled around to see a talib glaring at her, anger in his eyes and a stick in his hand. You must be covered up. Who is your father? Who is your husband? They will be punished for letting you walk the street like that. The soldier raised his arm and brought his stick down on Parvana's shoulder. Parvana didn't even feel it. Punish her father, would they? Stop hitting me, she yelled. The talib was so surprised he held still for a moment. Parvana saw him pause and she started to run. She knocked over a pile of turnips at the vegetable stand and they went rolling all over the street. Clutching the still warm non to her chest, Parvana kept running, her sandals slapping against the pavement. She didn't care if people were staring at her. All she wanted was to get as far away from the soldier as she could, as fast as her legs could carry her. She was so anxious to get home, she ran right into a woman carrying a child. Is that Parvana? Parvana tried to get away, but the woman had a firm grip on her arm. It is Parvana. What kind of a way is that to carry bread? The voice behind the burqa was familiar, but Parvana couldn't remember who it belonged to. Speak up, girl. Don't stand there with your mouth open as though you were a fish in the market. Speak up. Mrs. Weira? Oh, that's right. My face is covered. I keep forgetting. Now, why are you running and why are you crushing that perfectly good bread? Parvana started to cry. The Taliban, one of the soldiers, he was chasing me. Dry your tears. Under such a circumstance, running was a very sensible thing to do. I always thought you had the makings of a sensible girl and you've just proven me right. Good for you. You've outrun the Taliban. Where are you going with all that bread? Home. I'm almost there. We'll go together. I've been meaning to call on your mother for some time. We need a magazine, and your mother is just the person to get it going for us. Mother doesn't write any more, and I don't think she'll want company. Nonsense. Let's go. Mrs. Weira had been in the Afghan Women's Union with Mother. She was so sure Mother wouldn't mind her dropping in that Parvana obediently led the way. And stop squeezing that bread. It's not going to suddenly jump out of your arms. When they were almost at the top step, Parvana turned to Mrs. Weira. About mother. She's not been well. Then it's a good thing I'm stopping by to take care of her. Parvana gave up. They reached the apartment door and went inside. Noria saw only Parvana at first. She took the naan from her. Is this all you bought? Where's the rice? Where's the tea? How are we supposed to manage with just this? Don't be too hard on her. She was chased out of the market before she could complete her shopping. Mrs. Weira stepped into the room and took off her burqa. Mrs. Weira! Noria exclaimed. Relief washed over her face. Here was someone who could take charge, who could take some of the responsibility off her shoulders. Mrs. Weira placed the child she'd been carrying down on the mat beside Ali. The two toddlers eyed each other warily. Mrs. Weira was a tall woman. Her hair was white, but her body was strong. She had been a physical education teacher before the Taliban made her leave her job. What in the world is going on here, she asked. In a few quick strides, she was in the bathroom, searching out the source of the stench. Why aren't those diapers washed? We're out of water, Noria explained. We've been afraid to go out. 
You're not afraid, are you, Parvana? She didn't wait for an answer. Fetch the bucket, girl. Do your bit for the team. Here we go. Mrs. Weir still talked like she was out on the hockey field, urging everyone to do their best. Where's Fatana? she asked as Parvana fetched the water bucket. Noria motioned to the figure on the tow shack buried under a blanket. Mother moaned and tried to huddle down further. She's sleeping, Noria said. How long has she been like this? Four days. Where's your father? Arrested. Ah, I see. She caught sight of Parvana holding the empty bucket. Are you waiting for it to rain inside so your bucket will fill itself? Off you go. Parvana went. She made seven trips. Mrs. Weira met her outside the apartment at the top of the steps and took the first two full buckets from her, emptied them inside, and brought back the empty bucket. We're getting your mother cleaned up, and she doesn't need another pair of eyes on her. After that, Parvana carried the water inside to the water tank as usual. Mrs. Weira had gotten mother up and washed. Mother didn't seem to notice Parvana. She kept hauling water. Her arms were sore, and the blisters on her feet started to bleed again. But she didn't think about that. She fetched water because her family needed it, because her father would have expected her to. Now that Mrs. Weir was there and her mother was up, things were going to get easier, and she would do her part. Out the door, down the steps, down the street to the tap, then back again, stopping now and then to rest and change carrying arms. After the seventh trip, Mrs. Weir stopped her. You filled the tank and the wash basin, and there's a full bucket to spare. That's enough for now. Parvana was dizzy from doing all that exercise with no food and nothing to drink. She wanted some water right away. What are you doing? Noria asked as Parvana filled a cup from the tank. You know it has to be boiled first. Unboiled water made you sick, but Parvana was so thirsty that she didn't care. She wanted to drink and raised the cup to her lips. Noria snatched it from her hands. You are the stupidest girl. All we need now is for you to get sick. How could anyone so stupid end up as my sister? That's no way to keep up team spirit, Mrs. Weira said. Noria, why don't you get the little ones washed for dinner? Use cold water. We'll let this first batch of boiled water be for drinking. Parvana went out into the larger room and sat down. Mother was sitting up. She had put on clean clothes. Her hair was brushed and tied back. She looked more like Mother, although she still seemed very tired. It felt like an eternity before Mrs. Weira handed Parvana a cup of plain boiled water. Be careful, it's very hot. As soon as she could, she drank the water, got another cup full, and drank that too. Mrs. Weira and her granddaughter stayed the night. As Parvana drifted off to sleep, she heard her, Noria, and Mother talking quietly together. Mrs. Weira told them about Parvana's brush with the Taliban. The last thing she heard before she fell asleep was Mrs. Weira saying, I guess we'll have to think of something else.